Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dean Davey. Today I'll be presenting a topic for organizational behavior, specific to organizational culture and value system. I'm often asked the question whether I believe that the softer issues in business, such as organizational culture and organizational values, affect the bottom line of an organization's performance. I have to say that my answer to that would be a categoric yes. I do believe that organizational culture and values play an incredibly important part in an organization's performance and ultimately their bottom line. And hopefully by the end of today, you'll agree with my assessment on that issue. Before we start, I'd like to just quickly define the three key learning objectives that I'd like to take you through today. The first learning objective is really to gain an understanding of what organizational culture and values are. The second is to take you on a journey on how organizational culture and values emulate in a business. And the third one is, uh, as we were referring to in the point uh, previously around an organization's culture and values affecting the performance of a business. We're going to investigate that as our third learning objective. I love this quote, and I want to read it to you. It's a definition of organizational culture, and it reads the following. Organizational culture is a set of understandings or meanings shared by a group of people that are largely tacit among members and are clearly relevant and distinctive to the particular group and are also passed on to new members. I think three th things strike me about that definition. One, organizational culture has meaning. It's strongly held onto. It's not something that's passed by lightly in an organization. People attach a very strong meaning to it. Two, it's tacit. Uh, it's not necessarily written on the statues or on the walls. All right? It's sort of intangible. It's those beliefs that people hold on to that are not written into the company's code of conduct. And third, it definitely drives a specific set of behaviors. I'd like to take you now through the three levels of organizational culture. And I'll go through each level in detail. But I'd like to start with uh, the first level of organizational culture. Um, and uh, I'd like to take you through how each of these levels impacts the organization in a specific way, ultimately thus affecting the bottom line, as we've discussed earlier. So level one, in terms of organizational culture, is what's known as the observable artifacts. The observable artifacts in a business are really the most obvious aspect of an organizational culture. These are the things that you can see when you walk into an organization and you can see, for example, whether it's open plan, space seating, the CEO sits in the open plan, it's very communicative, it's very free, and ultimately results in a very empowering and communicative uh, set of culture or values. The converse of that could be an organization which is very hierarchical. Uh, the CEO sits on the 23rd floor, he's got a big oak desk, he's behind glass doors, you have to wear a, a suit and tie when you go and visit him, and you can see just how the observable artifacts create a sense of organizational culture. The second level of organizational culture is what I would refer to as the espoused values. The espoused values can really be found in uh, the, uh, the mission statement and the values in an organization. These are the statements that an organization makes to its employees, to the public. It really tells the, uh, the, the external community what the organization stands for. Which brings me onto the topic of values. There's been a lot said and done about value systems and the impact that that has on an organization. But what really is a value system? Value system fundamentally is two things. It ascribes meaning to the individuals in an organization. They hold on to it. They believe in it. And secondly, they believe if the values are strong, the, the employees in an organization will believe that their values are stronger and more meaningful than the values of another organization. Very powerful indeed. I'd like to discuss just briefly the power of values and why you would possibly want to align your individual employees' values to your organizational value system? Well, it's quite simple. Uh, research has shown that in organizations where the individual's value systems are aligned to organizations' value systems, they're more productive, those individuals. Those productive stay with the organization. They don't have a, a high staff turnover rate. Uh, the organizations are much more engaged in what they do on a daily basis. I must tell you that uh, 
about three or four years ago, I was uh, consulting to a really small little uh, niche learning and development company where I saw the power of a value system. This organization was very innovative, it was very cutting edge, and it was about 30 employees that it employed. However, it was incredibly, incredibly successful. And when I started getting down to the nuts and bolts of why this organization was so successful, the one thing what, that stood out for me was the fact that the employees loved and lived the value system of the organization. The organization had a very simple value system. It was called LEAPT, L-E-A-P-T. And uh, it was an acronym which stood for the following. L stood for love. Anyone who joined the organization had to love what they did. They had to be in love with education. They had to love the organization. E stood for energy. Uh, every person that they recruited had high energy, almost a contagious energy enthusiasm for what they did. A Audacity. This organization believed that they could do anything. If somebody told them that they couldn't do something, they purposefully went out of their way to prove them wrong. P, proof. That stood for high levels of excellence, quality delivery on time. And then the T in LEAP stood for truth. Every single employee was encouraged to always be honest and truthful about every single situation. In fact, truth was encouraged to such an extent that if employees had committed a misdemeanor of some sort in the organization and they were honest about it, before it was found out, they were rewarded for it. So the advantages of a strong value system and aligning your individuals to your organizational value system, the power in that is immense. So I've discussed the, uh, the two levels of organizational culture. The third is what's known as beliefs, and this is really at the heart and soul of an organization's uh, culture. Um, this is the deepest form of organizational culture that you can get. I'd like to use an example, and uh, that example is a company that everybody today would know as Google. Google. And uh, Google, a few years ago, when it was highly in its entrepreneurial stages, um, the two shareholders, uh, Sergey and Larry, started looking for a CEO. And I'm sure you all know the story, but what Google had to go through was a fundamental shift from being an innovative, entrepreneurial organization to an organization which had certain processes and principles which could make it more sustainable as a business. And one of the challenges of the CEO that joined Google at that stage, who's been very successful to date, was to actually make sure that he matched the culture and the value system to his desire and need to implement processes into Google. And he's done it very successfully, but he was very cognizant of the fact that organizational culture was very powerful and he needed to match the organizational culture with the performance management system that he was introducing. We've discussed the three levels of organizational culture. We've discussed the, the artifacts, we've discussed the value system, and then we discussed the, the real belief system at the heart of organizational culture. What I'd like to discuss now very briefly is how do you create a strong organizational culture? Well, there's two very simple ways to create a strong organizational culture. The first is organizational culture has to be lived and breathed by management. They set guidelines and they are role models for the organizational culture. This is the quickest and easiest way to create an organizational culture. The next one is obviously communicate, communicate, and when you think you've communicated enough, communicate more. Communicate on all aspects of the business to create a strong organizational culture. The third one, I said two, there's actually three, is really to create strong rituals and rewards around and for people who live the organizational culture and values. Uh, in the organization, which I was lucky to be a part of and, until recently, um, we had a very strong mantra around organizational culture and values. And we implemented a campaign specific to reward people who lived and loved the organizational culture and values to a point where on a monthly basis we would have a prize giving and at the end of the year uh, the winner of the, uh, the person who, who, who held dearly and reflected the organizational culture and values the best during the year would actually be sent on a trip to Mauritius. Not bad for living the organizational culture and values but the point is that by creating this campaign and an awareness where people were rewarded around it, it really fundamentally changed uh, in a positive way the organizational culture and value system in that firm. I started the session off by asking you uh, whether organizational culture can actually affect the performance of a business. 
I'd like to close by posing the following to you. An organization generally adapts a specific culture to match the environment in which it's moving and in which it's existing. Resistance to any form of change is generally towards an organizational culture. So if you read numerous stories around new CEOs who get into an organization and they want to make fundamental changes, you'll see that time and time again, the massive, the biggest change that they face or the biggest challenge that they face is how to drive that change against the current organizational culture and value system. So organizational culture is a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. So based on the examples that I've given you, I hope that I've uh, at least made you consider the fact that organizational culture and values does affect the bottom line of organization. Ladies and gentlemen, today we've covered what organizational culture and values are, we've covered how we create them, and hopefully, hopefully, I've convinced you that organizational culture and values do definitely play a role in an organization's performance and ultimately their bottom line. Thanks very much for joining me in the session. I hope you had as much fun as I have.